This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. From the launch your online shop stage, all the way to the we just hit a million orders stage. No matter what stage you're in, Shopify's there to help you grow. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash special offer, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash special offer. Brew Strong is brought to you by Blickman Engineering, home of the Riptide. Visit them online at blickmanengineering.com. It's time for the beer radio you've been looking for. This is the show that dispels myths, tackles the toughest topics, and makes no apologies for geeking out on beer. Hosted by two guys that drink before they think, Jamil Zainashev and John Palmer. This is Brew Strong. Welcome to Bruce Strong, ladies and gentlemen. I couldn't do my Jamil impression today, <laughs> no Palmer. Uh, we are live from Homebrew Con in uh, Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, I have the pleasure of sitting next to my good friend, John Palmer. How you doing, Justin? I'm hanging in there. How are you doing? I'm about the same. Yeah. yeah? It's like, I'm ready for a nap. You know, you know <laughs> this is my 14th year and I still haven't learned my fucking lesson, John. <laughs> still, I go out too late. I have a little too much beer, but I am having a good time. Definitely. Uh, yeah. We're broadcasting today. Jamil couldn't be here. I, unfortunately, you still got to put up with me. Uh, uh, I'm filling in for him on Bruce Strong. Um, he, he was in Providence. Yep. And then uh, he, he had a little family emergency. He had to fly home. I'm assured yeah. that everything is okay. Yep. Uh, exactly. But he had to, He was here and ready to go and then had to get his ass home in a, in a hurry. Yep. Uh, so we miss him. Our thoughts are with Jamil and Liz, uh, his wonderful wife and the family. They're doing okay. So don't worry too much. I just wanted to let you know that that's why you have right. to listen to me. That's, there you go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, boy, great to, be, great to be here. Great to have you with me. And uh, we got some... Very distinguished guests with us today. We do. Uh, well, at least one of them's distinguished anyway. Yeah. We'll let them figure out which one that, uh, I mean. Uh, which story we're we referring to. John yes. Blickman is sitting with us right now. Uh, of course, a wonderful sponsor of this program and an all-around good guy. Hi, John. Hello. I'm, I'm, just I'm trying being to... non-distinguished. <laughs> I'm going to say nice things about you because I don't want to get shot. You're, uh, we were talking guns for about 45 minutes the other night, and it, it always worries me. <laughs> yeah, especially the new sniper thing. That yeah. got me worried. <laughs> That's Chris Graham uh, from More Beer, uh, a good friend of mine, one of our longest uh, sponsors here on the Brewing Network as well. And, yeah, Graham, we had to sit and listen about how John Blickman's about to go to sniper school. With Brad Smith. With Brad from uh, yeah. Beer Smith. Yes. Yeah. What the hell do you need to go to sky, uh, sniper school for it? Well, I think why in Brad's the hell case, you, yeah. why the hell do you need to spend six thousand dollars on brewing equipment? Good you don't. Yeah, you want true. to. You yeah. just want to. Yeah, it's fun. That's why. <laughs> yeah. You're looking forward to this. You had you had a twinkle in your eye when you were talking about sniper school. Oh yes, <laughs> it is going to be really fun. Well, you know, it's it's kind of I'm I'm thinking you know from an outsider's point of view since I don't I don't have any guns myself. Right. But you know, I'm looking at John with his you know mechanical empire. And Brad with his computer empire, and it's like, yes, you know, what is that next step? And it's, you know, the the full. It's clearly sniper school. Snipering, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is computerized the snipering. Yeah, <laughs> megalomania is finest. Yeah. You know, start bullet smith. There you go. <laughs> you kind of bring up a good point, John. I don't even want to know about the other things that John Blickman builds. <laughs> like, I, I, if you're here at HomerCon, you go check out his booth. I mean, he is an engineer's engineer. Like, he, he knows what he's doing. There is probably a whole, you know, there's a there's a shop behind your shop where you build the other <laughs> things, and I don't even yeah. want to know what those Be are. Be careful when you go in his basement. <laughs> I've been in there. You have Be it. careful. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Well, today uh, we wanted to have you all on the program uh, because we wanted to talk about all-in-one uh, brewing systems, which, you know, when I started the Brewing Network back in 05, I don't even think uh, they existed. That there was one. There was one back then? The Braumeister. Yes. Oh, that's oh, yeah, been around the since then. The yeah. grandfather of them all. The, the Braumeister. Okay. 
Um, yeah, because in fact, we've had Chris Graham on several shows just talking about how to how to put together a system on a budget, how to have a Ferrari of a system, all you know, everything in between. Right, right. But all in ones, Palmer, you were kind of saying to me, you think that's you know really a part of the future of homebrewing. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's uh, you know for so many years, uh, it, homebrewing was a do-it-yourself thing. You know, assemble your own equipment from pieces around the house. But, you know, then along comes John and, and Chris and more beer, and we've gotten some systems come together, the old, the infamous tippy dump system <laughs> and, oh, yeah. you know, the, uh, the top tiers and so on. And now they're kind of coming together in the all-in-one, you know, semi-programmable. Um, but, you know, it makes a nice small form factor for the people with not a lot of room around the house. And uh, and as an electric system, you you get away from the hassle of gas and propane. And sure. Yeah, I think for a lot of people, that's going to be the the easy answer for how to how to start doing all grain brewing. Are all of the all in ones electric? Yes. Yes. That's, yes. So, yep. so that's one part of it right there. The yeah, right. electric, mm-hmm. uh, which is something that's really advanced over over the last several years as well, the, making electric a little more affordable, a little more convenient, right, um, right. and and more uh, effective. Even. Yeah. So. Well, and the Braumeister has always been 220. So right. while it's been around for a long time, it hasn't wow. been really accepted here in the States because it wasn't as easy um, to wire up. To use. Right. I would have had to sit in my laundry room <laughs> uh, and plug into my dryer plug to use it. <laughs> and so, John, the, uh, the perennial uh, manufacturer engineer, you've started to make all-in-ones yourself? Yes, we just released in our Anvil line the, uh, uh, the foundry. Yep. Okay. Yep. Tell us about that. Uh, it's we really wanted to focus on um, simplicity. That's kind of a hallmark of our our design philosophy in general right, in Blickman right. and in Anvil. And uh, a lot of the new brewers are not starting out like we started out doing extract extract right. on the stove. You know, partial extract boils, those kind of things. They're jumping right into all grain brewing. Okay, and all grain brewing can be a little daunting. Um, right. But you know, but if you can make it super easy, then people will get into it and they'll realize, you know, wow, there's this is something I can do. This is something I can make from scratch. This sure. is something I can continue to advance and work on and yeah. and, and do different things. So, um, uh, Chris hit up on the they used to be only 240, and then some of them came out that were uh, 120 volt, mm-hmm. but the 120 volt you just you're limited to about 50, well pretty much 15 amps in most homes. And that really limits how much power you have. So the heating times were s- fairly slow, and mm-hmm. the boil intensities were pr- were pretty weak. Okay. You know they work, uh, but you just had to be a little patient. And um, you know, not you know, if you're in an apartment, you may just not have access to 240 volt power. I see. You may only have the 120 volt, or you you know you may you know you may be uh, not able to you know in a an apartment do any modifications to your power system to get that yeah um so with the, the foundry we we wanted to make something that worked on both 120 volt and 240 volt all right so that way it you know if somebody had that capability they could uh brew with faster heating speeds and, and better boils but if all they had was 120 volt they could get the job done with that as well and is that just a switch on your system or it knows when it when i plug it in it's it's a switch and uh Changing out the plug. Now, you have to change the plug. Okay, of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, Justin, just try to shove it in. I'm like, yeah. Just see if you can do it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, Bend this one this way a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It has to be a 90 degree, so rotate that with a pair of pliers. I've done that yeah. before. That's why my hair looks like it does. <laughs> yeah. I've seen people make adapter cables. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Which, according to my insurance company, I cannot condone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I neither, neither condone or create. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then we just tried to make it super simple with you know, things from putting the pump outside. So you can, if you want to recirculate, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. All right. Um, easier to clean. And uh, and then one of the things that uh, we were talking, Chris and I were just talking about earlier, is um, the instructions. Some of the instructions are just horrible. Yeah. 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 That, well, was, that was yeah. being kind. And, and it, not so, it's not that they weren't correct. Yeah. They were just more advanced than they needed to be. Okay. You know, like... You know, doing the calculations for uh, all your grain and water additions and all that other stuff. Yeah. And uh, temperature ramping and yeah, and I ramping see. inputs. And so so we, we worked a lot on the manual where we just have a table. This is how many pounds of grain I have. I'm going to sparge or not. 
this is how much water I need. Yeah. And then uh, Palmer and I worked together and yeah. uh, and created a table for water additions or salt additions for the water. Because as we know, that's an important thing to get the beer flavor that you want, to get the mash pH that you want, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But this is pretty daunting stuff for somebody who is more, I mean, they're daunted just by, okay, I got to mix this in and, and do this. To what try to hit them with water bring, chemistry yeah. and have them understand all that, it's just too much. Yeah. Too, you know, too much too soon. Yeah. Like the Grinch. <laughs> too much too soon. <laughs> too much too soon. <laughs> I think this is an excellent point you make just about instructions in general. I don't know if I've ever told this story on air, but the Brewing Network started because I was given a homebrew kit, which had a, a sheet of paper of instructions, but they weren't enough. And in some cases, they were a little too complex, and, and in other cases, they, they seemed to have omitted information. And so, I, But I was lucky enough to live in an area where I could just call up some brewers, I could call some friends. And so all throughout my first brew day, I'm just on the phone asking, what do I do next? How do I do this? What do they mean by add this water? And I realized, I bet that there was a, there's a whole population of new brewers that have the same stupid questions that I had. And I thought if I do that on air, if I record it, they might want to hear the answer, like so we can all get the answers together, and that's how the Brewing Network started. Uh, cool. I just I did a, I did my first podcast based on my first awful brew day, and I remember that comment. So what I did is we have a picture of Justin <laughs> in our office, <laughs> I'm and, like, our, yeah. and our people that develop the manuals. I say that is what you're writing this manual for. I love this. I'm the <laughs> reminder uh, every day. Go in and look at that. Oh, idiot. anyone can understand this. Oh, wait. Okay, rewrite. Yeah. yeah. So when you get a, a bad piece of paper, you're like, uh, have you looked at the idiot today? Because <laughs> this is not where we're at. It was a bad paragraph. We just write Justin. Justin. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, well, and I think this is important. Um, and and I want to go back to what you said also that you're finding that brewers aren't starting out as a, at, at extract anymore. And Chris, that that has not been the case always. We all started out with extract, right? Of course, that's the way you have to. Two cans of malt extract, yes. right? Yeah. Sugar, some yeast underneath the cat. That's how we all start, right? Yeah. Okay, Blow but all these new kids are skipping that step. Oh, that, that's long gone. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you guys have several different all-in-ones at More Beer. Uh, I, I've gotten to brew on all of them except for one. Oh, hint. hint. You haven't brewed on John's uh, yet. Yeah. Yes, it's <laughs> brand new. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. Uh, no, it, it's been fun. And, and you know, you're talking about it's a whole new segment. We're finding actually a lot of uh, people coming back into brewing, and it's an easier one to come back into. Right. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of lifestyle changes, whether sure. that be family relationships or. or uh, actually having a family or splitting up from a family, not having a <laughs> right. garage anymore, uh, things <laughs> These like things that. These things happen, yeah. Finally yeah. getting your family out of the house. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. And so myself included, I have one at home now. Um, Which one do you have? I have the grandfather. Okay. Oh, nope, sorry. I have a robo -brew. A Can't robo keep track. Yeah. I had a grandfather, now I have a robo -brew. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. Um, it, it's more about I'm, I have twins who are in kindergarten mm -hmm. and we had, we formed a, our wives formed a book club so we formed a brew club okay oh, nice. as the husband nice. every do. other month we do it and what i love now about the electric one is we did it four or five times at my house that was cool but then someone's like hey can i host the next one i'm like yeah i don't want you at my house all the time <laughs> and everybody has it you know oh, it's okay. not like oh you're gonna need a propane tank we're gonna need this we're gonna need yeah. that it's you got a cord yeah. and it's, it's mobile yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's much more. And it's dead quiet. Yeah. Uh, you can brew extract or all grain. So you're not locked into doing all grain either. Okay. Right. That's right. a good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And really, you know, it's one item to clean up at the end of the day. One item to find a brew. Yeah. Because sometimes when you get into multi vessel systems, you're like, oh, where did I put that? Where is yeah. that oh, part? Yeah, Where's yeah. that connecting piece? I have drawers full of things uh, in my garage <laughs> that I've been given over the I have a Therminator in one drawer, I've got a pump from you guys in the other drawer. Yeah, I got to piece this thing together. If yeah, I, half, right. half the day, if you don't brew often enough, half the day you're homebrewing your system together to make yeah, it work. Exactly, right. yeah. yeah. I was even thinking about brewing the other day, and it was daunting because <laughs> I haven't done it in a while. Oh, man, I got to put this whole thing back together, and then is it going to work? Uh, so this is a good point. You so let me guess, in. you didn't brew. I did not brew. Absolutely not. No. <laughs> I needed to I was almost. So I have a, a more beer uh, 1550. You have a tippy W. You have Jamil's old system. It's Jamil's old system. We're giving it away tomorrow night to one lucky Brewing Network listener. But I was feeling nostalgic and feeling like I should brew on it one last time. One last time. time. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't. No, you would have made it all dirty. So. I know. it would have. <laughs> I know. I felt like I was going to break it before I give it to somebody. <laughs> yeah. Here it is. Yeah. <laughs> now, John, do you have an all-in-one at home as well? 
Not yet. Okay. No, I've, I'm well. I'm I'm using the Brew Easy these days. Okay. And uh, that's a very convenient system. Um, it's electric, like the All in Ones. Sure. But uh, yeah, the um, the the All in Ones are very nice. Um, and I guess the beauty of them is that they are evolving still in terms of. Um, the, the mash methods you can use, you know, you can do recirculation, you can do some temperature rest, or you can treat it simply as a convenient all-in-one boiler where you do a, a single infusion and no sparge yeah. um, and uh, make your beer that way. So, right. yeah. Nice. Well, it's, it, it's interesting because I felt like there was like a weird evolution of, you know, all grain used to be the three vessel system. Everyone had to have a three. Oh, yeah. And then right. you kind of popularized batch sparging. And so it kind of was like three or right. two. Yeah. And then um, then all of a sudden it was, oh, just press a button, the Pico and the right, uh, brewery right. and such. And, sure. And, and walk away. And I brewed on those a couple of times. One of them I did in my office just to do it. Yeah. And it was yeah. so cool. But yeah. then I was like, wait, I had no control. Uh, you know, I felt like I couldn't make a modification or an adjustment along the way. Yeah. And then when I first brewed on one of the, I think Grandfather was the first all-in-one I brewed right, on. Right. And it was like, oh, this is actual brewing. Like, I, I can yeah. control each part of this. I can make a change on the fly. I can... I liken know. it to brewing, uh, making bread in a bread machine versus making bread by hand. By yeah. hand, yeah. 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 You're you know? still doing it by hand, but it's a lot fairly easier. convenient because yeah. it's small. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, yeah. Well, why don't we do this? Because I want to talk about the variations between the systems and, and maybe which has more control and which is a little more push the button. We're going to take a real quick break. And when we come back, uh, more on all-in-one brew systems with Chris Graham and John Blickman. Hang in there. We'll be right back. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. From the launch your online shop stage all the way to the we just hit a million orders stage. No matter what stage you're in, Shopify's there to help you grow. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash special offer, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash special offer. Are you looking for a simple brewing system that's great for all grain brewing, but everything on the market seems to be full of compromises? Blickman Engineering has the answer. The Blickman Brew Easy All Grain Brewing System. The Brew Easy is a complete system with easy upgrades and a beautiful compact design, perfect for any size brewing location. At its core, the Brew Easy is built on two gorgeous Blickman Boilermaker brew kettles, a high temperature March pump, and either a top tier gas burner or the new boil coil electric heater. The Brew Easy adapter lid allows the pots to stack on top of each other, forming an efficient, strong, and compact brewing setup that comes in 5, 10, and 20 gallon batch sizes. Upgrade your Brew Easy system with full automated control by adding a Blickman Tower of Power temp controller and make moving around easy with the Blickman Kettle Cart. The Brew Easy is modular. If you already own a Boilermaker kettle, you can build your Brew Easy by purchasing just the modules you need. The new Brew Easy All Grain Brewing System. See it today at BlickmanEngineering.com and brew with Blickman quality on your new Brew Easy. All right, welcome back to Brew Strong, ladies and gentlemen, live from HomebrewCon in Providence, Rhode Island. It's fun to be here. I just saw my friend Crispy walk by, who I want to just give a quick shout out because he won the AHA Recognition Award this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. Which Palmer and I are in that club together. Right, yeah. We've yeah. both gotten that, and I was really proud of him, and he deserves it, and it was uh, fun to see yeah, that happen. Yeah, he is. He is a brewer's brewer. It's yeah. been real integral in the whole in the whole industry, well, in the, in the organization for he has. twenty years. And this is the first year he says that he's not been uh, working for the AHA on the committee, uh, right. which he, he loved. He's he was not now disparaging, and, but he just came to enjoy the the party and then got recognized for his contribution. So that's really cool. Very to see. nice. Yeah. yeah. I, I sat for a long time with him on those various boards, and and you talk about an active member. Yeah, I was yeah. a fairly inactive member most of the time <laughs> there when they <laughs> needed me, but I wasn't proactively working on things, and that guy loved it. He loved he every bit of it. And and yeah. and well, I there think is a little blue pill for that though, Chris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell me more. That's the secret. Uh, so congratulations to to Crispy. That was really good to see. I cried like a baby when I when they gave me that. It's, yeah, it's I remember. Just, it's a nice reward. Uh, yeah. a nice award to 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 get. Um, now, of course, we got Denny Khan and Drew Beecham about to do their program across the way from us, too. And we've been uh, 
We've been saying all week that we're just going to collectively keep turning our speakers up and see if we can outdo the other one. <laughs> uh, so if you haven't gotten a chance to come to HomebrewCon, you should come next year. It's in Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, so there's no reason uh, not to do this. Yeah. All right, boys. So we're talking about all-in-one brew systems, and, and there's a few available on the market now. H how many do you guys sell at More Beer, Graham? Uh, so the most popular one we sell is the Robo Brew. The Robo in Brew. In terms okay. of quantity sold, then sell the Grainfather, of course. Mm -hmm. um, now we now we sell John's Anvil, the Anvil. Foundry, right? Right. right. Foundry, mm -hmm. um, and we've always sold the um, Braumeister. Okay, got it. So you've got several, and are you finding also, as John's uh, kind of saying here, that John Palmer saying that they're they're just increasing in popularity, that these systems are, are starting to outpace your other brew systems or other ways to brew? Yes, okay. I, I would say that. No, a traditional kettle, no, I don't think it's sure. outpacing that. But in terms of you know against our six thousand dollars system, yes. yeah. Wow, yeah. they really are turning their. They are going to go for it, just, aren't yeah. they? It sounded like yeah. a real drum kit. Yeah. Actually. yeah. <laughs> So yeah, you know, it's such a great price point right. that uh, if, if if anything, it uh, it makes it you know where people are like that's a very approachable price point. Yeah, they look at John and I's higher end systems and they're like that's the dream, and a few get there, yeah, um, yeah. and very few start there. There are people who start there, but very few relative to these where it's like oh yeah, I'll just do that and I'll do it extract for a while and when I'm ready for all grain I already have everything needed. Mm -hmm. So obviously if I grab myself some igloo coolers and a kettle it's going to be cheaper but are you finding that the price point is such that people are sort of doing the math and yep. going okay for a couple of few hundred bucks more I can just get it done with this. Exactly and it, it comes down to simplicity. Okay. You know where your heat source is built into it. It's not like okay a couple of coolers now you need a burner somewhere to yeah. get that, that water up the temperature and it it just takes out all the complexity. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so it really simplifies things that it's all right there. Do you get all the control or the ability to double batch or do other things? No, but most people aren't doing that anyway. So right. let's talk about that, both of you. Are there certain systems that give you more control over others? Or well, the Blickman system and the Morbius system, clearly, <laughs> over all the others. But in, in the all-in-one, though, are there some that are just to push a button and some that I can do step mashing? So, you know, John, I don't know your controls well enough yet. Up to before the Foundry came out, yeah. the Robo Brew was the only one that originally had, and it didn't originally have it. It just had, turn. you want your temperature up, press it up. Now okay. you can program, uh, I think, up to four or five steps in your mash. Oh. And one of them we've been kind of using as a delay start. So it's a nice way to, like, in the morning, we just say the first one, do then, and it brings you up to the temperature before you want to dough in, which is nice. I don't have to set it up in the morning. I can set it up the night before. Interesting. Okay. Um, but no, but knowing right. the good people at Blickman Engineering, they probably have something similar to that. <laughs> Tell us about yours, John. Well, what, what we did with the Anvil line is we really focused on uh, simplicity. You know, so you can walk up and use the thing without having to read an exhaustive manual. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, we, and program we made it. Very, and very just and Ah, just again, what's, yeah, I'm on the wall of your office. Yeah. <laughs> so you didn't want to have all of these steps to program, and so you just wanted it to. I can I can just jump in and brew. Right. You know, and, and you know what we're finding is one we do have the delay, and it comes in, and your strike's ready. Oh, okay. You can dough in, and see. I knew he'd have that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. At least that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, but but some of that is that when we started all grain brewing. You always had to step mash. You had to do this and you had yeah. to do that because that's what you did. Okay, yeah, that, you know, was the, that was what we were told and what we were, you know, taught. Right. We did what John told us to do, and then it <laughs> turns out he was he was wrong. Jesus. <laughs> he became wrong. Yeah. That's eventually. Right. Yes. Uh, you know, so a lot of people just don't do the step mash. They do the the you know the single uh, single infusion. Single infusion. And most of the time they don't need to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that and is. then and they may do a mash out if they if they want to, but they. Just may not. Sure. You know, so we, we opted for the real simple. We put, uh, you know, some have internal pumps, which is convenient because you really don't have anything to set up. But if they plug, it becomes a bit of a problem. Yeah. You know, it's difficult. So we move the pump outside, and you can recirculate if you want. If you want to keep it as simple as, you know, a basic brew in a bag kind of setup, you can. You could do that as well. Um, you know, so you'll see systems that are, you know, just very all over. And then you can take it the next step up. If you want more control, but you don't want to go all the way to, 
you know, a three kettle system. There's, uh, you know, we've got that breezy that you brew on. Right. You right. know, that's a two vessel system. So, you know, there's, you know, that and the Blickman line. So the nice thing is there's a number of different levels of uh, features and, and complexity. And, you know, some brewers like all the controls and the knobs. You know, we, we're both selling these horizontal systems that people just love it because they yeah. just have all the knobs. And, yeah. and all the gadgets and gizmos, that's part of the fun in the hobby. You know, this isn't just, you know, I need beer to drink. Yeah. I got to go through this thing. I just want it to, I just want it to be done. Sure. Um, it's, hey, this is an experience for me, you know. So it's, you know, yeah. as you're selecting a system, you just kind of have to, de- you know, decide what, what is it that I want out of the hobby, you know. If right. I just want a laid back, fun brew day, these are great yeah. systems for it. Uh, and that's yeah. what these are for. Okay. This mm-hmm. is for making beer making fun. Okay. Easy and fun. Uh, Right, I right. think it's one that if you love the hobby and you really get in the science behind the hobby, then you're probably going to want to keep moving. You get bored. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, exactly. That makes and, sense. And, and, but the cool thing is you still have either a hot liquor down the road or, you know, it's not like, oh, well, now this is useless. I'll throw it away. It's, yeah. it, it can boil lobsters, whatever you need to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah there you go. And I find myself, uh, you know, if I, if I want to make some, you know, really tweaked beer, I'll use my brew easy. Mm-hmm. But you know, if I just want to, I just want English bitters on tap. I just use that Anvil Foundry and just uh, can get it done yeah. real quick. You can also suit V in them too, which is cool. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I have not tried that, and I'm going to. You had mentioned that the other day. So, yeah. I let me back up a little bit. I probably should have done this in the beginning. I'm a little slower than than usual today, John. Believe it or not. <laughs> um, how does it all in one exactly work? Because <laughs> right, I'm trying to picture this, and I, I mean, I have the general idea in my head. The mash tun is the same as the kettle, but I feel like I have to move things around still. How does it work? So the mash tun, which the Germans called a malt pipe, and so now I feel like we all have to copy the malt pipe. The malt pipe. So, yeah. Okay. So Z. essentially, Z. Pipe. <laughs> yeah, Z. I so call it a grain basket. <laughs> so it's a smaller <laughs> pipe basket. Yeah. You know, John's is cool because it's. It all integrated, where most of them have kind of a separate false bottom that sits in there okay. and can fall out easily, and that, that can be a pain in the butt. Um, but you have a smaller diameter pipe that literally just drops right in. All right. And so you have water on the outside of that, and you have water pumping over the top or, or wort pumping around. So you can get a nice even temperature, and you can maintain it. You can step mash it up if you want to or mash out. Um, but essentially, it's a... Think of it like a big bag inside of your tube, okay. but it's made of metal. Um, and then when you're done with the mash, you literally pull them up, and most of them, you turn them quarter uh, clockwise, or either way, quarter turn, and they have rest built in that you just let it sit on top. So this is the part where I guess I, I'm confused, because I'm, I'm thinking that I have this large, heavy, wet mash sitting inside a vessel. Yeah. How do I get that out? Muscles. So you do still have to lift this vessel out of the yeah. other vessel. And it's really not that bad. Okay, no, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Just, the water drains out actually pretty quickly, so you can just slowly lift it. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. grain, the wet grain isn't isn't too heavy. Yeah. 20 pounds. Yeah. 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 Lift it up and, and turn it and, and then and it sits it. on top. Once, it once you get okay. it up and turn it, you can then let go. So you don't have to sit there holding it for long periods of time. Yeah. I understand. And then I can start my boil. You can either choose to just do a spargeless system mm-hmm. um, or you can sparge. Okay. Um, either way, but if you're sparging, you're you're literally just you sprinkling know, water for a pot water. on it. So batch sparging is really what you're doing. You're, you, it, you've already yes. you've already sparged. You pull it out. You let it drain, of yep. course, so that it, it continues to fill the kettle with whatever liquid is in right. the grain. You maximize how much liquid you get out of it. Understood. Okay, mm-hmm. and then I can start my boil in that same vessel it was already sitting. You just sitting remove in. that to the side, okay. as, which is super easy to clean compared to like my twenty gallon mash tun. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And then, okay, and so at that point, even before the boil, and John, you and I just covered this in a recent episode about enzymes and, right, and right. modified malts. As, right. as Blickman was kind of pointing out, the single infusion is probably fine. But if yeah. I wanted to do a mash out, I could do that still while I have it sitting in the vessel? Exactly. Okay. So you just turn the temperature up to 168, 170, wherever you want to go. Yeah. And it'll just keep recirculating. And I see. So that's where you need the pump, whether it's on the inside or outside. You just need that flow going. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then when it gets my system now. uh, Exactly. Except that I have the three vessels doing it. But okay, got it. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so now I do my mash out because I want to, because John Palmer told me to do that years ago. <laughs> um, and now I'm ready to just bring things to a boil. I turn a dial to, to is, does it just say boil on the dial? I, like, what do you? Ours, <laughs> you just bump it up and just it, bump it, it just changes the temperature. Most okay. of them. Now, a lot of them have multiple power on there. I, don't, I haven't used yours yet. So do you have multiple switches? We have a uh, digital power control. Oh, okay. So you just uh, you can uh, just just like you set your temperature, you can go anywhere between zero and one hundred percent power. Okay. You know, others like you were talking about, Chris, have like a five hundred watt and a thousand. So watt you have what uh, you, you want to get it up to a boil quick. You hit both of them. I see. Um, you, yeah. you know, you, you watch the rest of the house dim a little bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. but, but you can super boil yeah. basically. But but then once you get up there, you usually only need one of them to maintain a boil. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Um, okay, but so 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 recipe wise, everything else is really the same. I'm just yeah. changing the amount of vessels I have to brew with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, of course, there's the given the volume of these things, you have a little bit of restriction on the uh, the size of the batch versus the, the gravity of, grains of the batch. You put in. Yeah, because yeah. okay. you are limited on total grain size. So maybe if my favorite style is barley wine, I might have a little difficulty making the full volume of You might make a wine. smaller batch. A smaller yeah, batch, yeah. okay. Two or three gallons. no or shame in adding extract. Yeah, if yeah. If you want to do a bigger, a bigger beer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I that's mean, maybe that's okay <laughs> with you. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And with the, no electric, with the electric system, um, do I not have to worry about things like scorching anymore? Is it more evenly boiled? I think they all are using the... Well, first off, they're all separate. They're not actually electrical elements in the war, except for the Braumeister. Yeah. Um, they're so bonded they're not to in the immersion. bottom. Yeah. <coughs> they're, they're not actually asset. in the liquid. They're, there's a, 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 a bottom between them and the liquid. I see. And they're, they're bonded to the bottom of the kettle. So they look a lot like your electric uh, coil type heater at home okay. that they've just basically glued the Sealed heating element right up onto, onto the right. bottom so, yeah. of the kettle. And yours is that way as well, John? Yeah, all of, all of them are that way. And, and some vary in, uh, you know, what they call watt density. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so, you know, some, you know, depending on which, which one, some, uh, all of them work pretty darn well. Okay. Yeah. You know, some will get a little, a little bit more prone to scorching and others are are less prone. Okay. The smaller the batch, the more scorching I've seen, and which makes mm -hmm. sense because uh, yeah, you're concentrated. Less liquid. Mm -hmm. Okay. And even then, it's more of a caramelizing yes. than it is a scorching. It's not yeah. like built on and you can't get it off of that. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Palmer, you and I are like kind of self-proclaimed uh, lazy people. I am right, surprised right. that you don't have even a plethora of these systems at your house he at your disposal. Yeah. He hasn't gotten around to asking me for one. Yeah, and neither has Graham. <laughs> oh, no, I, I noticed I, he I, did, I, did I, today. I, yes. And they just implied it. That's as far as John needs to go. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what we do. We just kind of put that out <laughs> there and see what show. you do with it. Yeah. We'll no, get your damn systems, and I'll let you <laughs> move on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's, it is a... It is how would my wife put this? Um, <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and basically, you know, there are questions that would arise as to yet another piece of equipment. So uh, I have not been, you know, I guess rapid in requesting or putting in my requisition for another piece of equipment <laughs> around the house. Um, so, yeah, but it is, it is a very nice little system. And, you know, the fact that it's electric... Mm -hmm. um, less things to mess with, uh, less cleanup because you know I remember I remember the golden days of uh, many years ago with the uh, the Brutus ten you know gas fired rims and I built myself one and I installed extra switches so I could do some things automatically and mm -hmm. what a pain in the ass that thing was to clean up yeah you know, just like wow okay three hours later and I'm almost done. Um, but as John and Chris have mentioned, you you might get bored if that's the kind of thing that you're yeah, into, yeah, like you yeah. were when you built that. That's right. Mm -hmm. it, it's a lot of fun, um, but you know. But I, I, I recognize as a lazy person that there are trade-offs. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Ease of brewing yeah. versus you know the, the the delight of technology. And this is part of why I'm perfectly happy to give away my more beer system right now because I know that I'm now in the lazy man's world. I just want an yep. all-in-one. Wait, wanna... wait till you clean one. I know. It really. is cake. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, let's talk about that when we come back, too. Uh, we're going to take a real quick break and more on all-in-one systems when we come back live from HomebrewCon. 
Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. Welcome back to Brew Strong. We are live from HomebrewCon in Providence, Rhode Island, uh, drinking some Melvin beer. I just went down uh, at the yeah, break. Our, yeah. fr- our friends at the Melvin Tent um, and got us some Hubert, which is one of my favorite. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, very very sessions. good beer. It's a nice beer. Uh, us, uh, the Brewing Network, more beer, and Melvin will be partying tomorrow night while we give away the uh, the winner of the Boil Rumble, Chris Graham. It's about time we had a winner. We've got to go judge it today, oh, actually. Work, this, work, work. We're, we've got six <laughs> finalists, and uh, we're going to go down and pick and pick out who our, our big winner is. We'll announce that tomorrow. Uh, that winner will receive a more beer brew sculpture. Yep. Or, or they can have an all-in-one if they want. That's a good call. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I'll be happy to. I'll give them four of them. <laughs> <laughs> right, for the, for the cost of one sculpture. <laughs> so... Uh, just before the break, we were talking even about cleaning. And uh, uh, professional brewers have something called CIP, which is a sort of clean in place. Is this kind of a thing that all-in-ones have as well? No. Nope. It's not quite clean in place. Okay. No, it, but, but it's easy. It's small. Okay. It's easily wiped down. You know, you're done with your mash when you're done with your mash, and you still have all the time for the boil. So always be cleaning. I mean, yeah. that's the easiest thing yeah, with brewing is always yes. be cleaning. Don't yes. wait to the end. And so you dump your mash out, and I mean, for the most part, you rinse them out. Okay. Now, most of the systems, the false bottom separate. So you kind of have to be careful about losing that, and they have gaskets that are a pain in the ass to get back into place and such. So that'll be my one downside on yeah. most of them. That was a softball pitch, John. <laughs> All right. Well, raise your hand if you've ever had a route through the garbage can to find a gasket. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> you <know>. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, on the anvil one, it's, it's uh, you know, welded to the bottom. And uh, we also have uh, some of them, if you recirculate too fast or put too much grain in them, uh, they will tend to stick. Gum up. Yeah. So they gum up in the, in the flow. If you're stops. doing a heavy wheat beer, it's, it's hard to put enough rice holes because your surface area is a little bit smaller. Because think of that mole pipe as smaller yeah. diameter than the whole uh, uh, typical vessel. kettle. Or, yeah. yeah. Okay. So. That makes sense. So the engineering firm... <laughs> Why gasket when you can weld? <laughs> there you go. So what we, uh, you know, we took that tack, but we also realized it just needs more surface area on the bottom. So we put side perforations uh, just a few inches up from the bottom. Of it the gives it more part. area for that word to flow, and it's just less prone to sticking. And, you know, still, if you're going to do a real gummy, you know, beer like a big oatmeal stout or, you know, uh, you know 50% wheat fruit, Rice holes are your friend. Okay, yep. Uh, and that helps. We also did a lot more volume. We wanted the 10 and a half gallon gross capacity so that um, you can really do, a, you know, add all of your water at once and just do a true, you know, brew in a bag type setup where you lift it up, don't need to add any more water, and you're good to go. I see. And that's uh, pretty cool. And you guys have, you charted out calculations for people already so they can just look at how many pounds of grain. You just look at right. a table. And then, it, uh, Justin, you could do this. And it's, oh, Amazing. how many pounds? How much water? Okay. That's it. Mm-hmm. Like yep. that, I'm, I'm, I know we make fun of me a lot for this, but in, in all seriousness, the, the grain to water ratio was always a thing for me because there's a lot of different philosophies, right? So I didn't, I never right. really knew exactly yes. what to do to hit my target gravity. This was always a thing for me, was nailing my target gravity mm-hmm. based on grain to water ratio. Uh-huh. So you're saying that this is just sort of outlined right on the, right on the system. This yep. is more about, you know, basic, like, here's grain absorption. Here's yeah. how much grain you're using. So here's how much liquid you, you need is going to be removed so you need to start with this much liquid yeah Yeah. it's not really you're you're talking like okay i'm going to be pumping that's where you could do that you could say oh i'm going to do a one to three ratio as opposed to a one to one or vice versa yeah Uh, really i found over the years that doesn't necessarily matter for me the water to grain ratio is more about the equipment you use and how you're doing it okay more than it does the um the the outcome as long as you're consistent. We did a show on this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the calculation, the model comes from the recent edition of How to Brew. Uh, I kind of worked up tables in Excel and, you know, plotted out. And 
Yeah, it makes it easy. You know, if you, especially for depending on what kind of lottery system you're going to use, whether it's batch sparge, no sparge, or brew in the bag. Um, yeah, you can calculate it that out and, and you know put it in a table, and that's so that's what we've included the instruction manual for the foundry is, you know, you want to brew a 1045 beer, your water and in grain low weights. Uh, you know, 1050, 1055, 1060. Yeah. You know, it's kind of listed out for you. It kind of takes a little bit of that guesswork out. Right. Okay. We did the same for water because as you're doing um, higher water to grist ratios, your water has a lot more buffering capability. Right. And to get your water chemistry right is even more important on a dilute uh, yeah. mash. And so we... You know, we, we recognize that people aren't going to want to learn about water chemistry and all this other stuff when they just want to know how to make beer. Yeah. 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 And so we put a table together on, we, uh, we had, some of the entries were uh, uh, pale, uh, yeah, hoppy. Pale, pale, pale malty, pale hoppy, pale balanced, then amber for the same. Hoppy, malt, pale. Malt, yeah. Yeah. And then dark, um, pop, hoppy, malty, balanced. Right, and then we just went over. Then you just you pick which kind of beer you're the closest to what you're brewing is. You go over, and it tells you how much gypsum to add, how much calcium chloride, wow. how much baking soda, how much yeah, whatever. Yeah, grams per gallon. Yeah, so. how many grams per gallon? Okay, mm-hmm. so not just the system is all in one. The instructions are all in one. Everything's right there on yeah. your chart. Yeah, yeah. I've is, I've read every single instruction except for theirs. Yeah, yeah, and. and by no means do any of these come with instructions like that. Uh, yeah. So that's pretty amazing. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you really just wanted to make it easy for a new brewer who's skipping extract and going right to all grain to just nail it. And most, of, most of them are so bad of instructions that we've rewritten them yeah. and include them in the box with, like, how to read. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, most of the manufacturers, you're saying, yes. the instructions, they, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It, like, it's like Ikea furniture. Yes. Uh, just, <laughs> it's all pictures. Yeah, it's all pictures of <laughs> yes. some random looking person with a, I think that's a screwdriver. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's they take a nice sharp drawing of a, of a screwdriver and then they, they put it through their pixelator. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We, don't, we don't know what it is, so we won't let you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. So there's a lot of uh, uh, easier ways for us to go straight to all grain now. Uh, More Beer, of course, has a selection of these all in ones. Um, including the foundry. Including the foundry. Um, do people order direct on, on Blickman as well, John? Not on Blickman, but on the Anvil site. Uh, on the Anvil do. site you can. Right. Okay. Yes. And this one is called the Anvil Foundry. It's brand new. Yes, it is. It's yep. been out just a few weeks, I think. Okay. It mm-hmm. also has a feature I want to mention before we move yeah. past that. So m- with most of the all-in-one systems, I'm a big proponent of encouraging people to get the... Um, neoprene wrap for the outside yeah the insulation ah, and wrap. It, it really helps you get up to anything fast as opposed to if you don't have it you're just all that surface area you're losing heat okay because they're all single walled vessels sure now what we've done as chris points to me good cue <laughs> uh we actually have uh, put a uh, a double wall design in so you've got an outer wall and an inner wall with an air gap between it that really adds a lot of insulation capability to it so it kind of comes with the insulation built Think in. Think of it like all these thermoses we see now where people are keeping their coffee hot for right. all day long. Yeah. That's exactly what I was just thinking of. And those those, those, those really work. I yeah. mean, you can put cold beer in one of those double insulated growlers and it'll be cold tomorrow. Why do you need that? So, though? Yeah. Just drink. <laughs> yeah. yeah, then you don't need an all one. You've just gone right to the beer. That's right. That's um, true. Oh, and we also have it in a six and a half gallon size for doing two and a half to three gallon batches. Who would do that? See, I mean, this is, I'm being honest here. This is something I've never understood. If it you're going to go through the trouble, why aren't you brewing five to ten gallons? Well, first off, this is a lot less trouble in my mind. It really is. Good call. And, okay. and uh, the other thing is I think it's probably, in my opinion, the right size batch to do with one 10, 15 volt. Yes. Oh, uh, that's Because the volume just yeah. you know, easier to get to a right. boil. And, yeah. Okay. And we're talking about lifestyles and how things change as you go. Yeah. And, uh, you know, now that I'm one hip into the grave here, <laughs> I've got all three kids out of the house. Right. Yeah. They're they, not drinking as much beer. They're not. They're not. They're not. Their boyfriends aren't sneaking in and, and you know, sneaking it out. And, and getting shot. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I really now find myself with more time to be able to brew. Sure. But I don't, you know, it's not, it's. It's, I have more time to brew right. because I'm not running kids, you know, everywhere, and I also don't drink as much, you know, sure. beer. I'm not, you know, yeah. it, so it, I, it, you I have more your styles. access to good beer is huge. Right. Yeah. Right. So what are the two sizes that the foundry comes in then? Uh, the gross size is uh, six and a half 
and uh, uh, ten, ten and, and a half gallon. Yeah. Okay. So they're intended for two to two and a half to uh, three, three gallon days. batches and and five gallon batches. Got it. Okay. But you know, I just like having more variety on tap. Sure. You know, so I'm finding myself just brewing five gallon batches, mm-hmm. and uh, just have different beer. Yeah, so I can have you know yeah. more styles on tap. And, and you can turn and burn like sometimes with like twenty gallon batches. When I was a kid, yeah, relative. Uh, I was over 21. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You needed that much for all your friends. Yeah. And now it's like right. 20 gallons would last me a year. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's because you don't invite me over anymore. Exactly. <laughs> That's the reason for that, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's nothing to do with the beer. Yeah. yeah. I agreed. Maybe we should have an episode, though, about what it must be like to be one of Blickman's daughter's boyfriends. Oh, my gosh. When her, <laughs> your your, your girlfriend's you s- dad's going to sniper school. I know. Can you send me that contact list, please, John? Because I want to interview these guys. It's, it's real simple. I just tell them if you touch them run in a serpentine fashion because i like a little bit of a challenge <laughs> right i'm not saying you have a chance but i like no. a little bit of a challenge uh you are hilarious john also you being one hip in the grave the good thing about you you can make yourself a new hip you're that kind of engineer <laughs> they got 3d printers now that'll print metal yeah yeah yeah, so. yeah yeah and my daughter's going to uh, med school wants to be an orthopedic surgeon so i'll get a discount yeah. There you go. Yeah. Do you, in all seriousness, do you use or do you think you will use 3D printing in the Blickman uh, uh, warehouse? We use it for prototyping pretty frequently. Yeah. yeah. You know, particularly for plastic parts or even, you know, even other parts. We just want to, you know, see how they fit up. And, yeah. you know, it's just, it's pretty inexpensive. Sure. So, yeah, yeah, I would imagine that that's like a real tool. That even you we like, do that. You know, finally. Yeah. You guys have one yeah, as well? Even a, a small, like, yeah. non-engineering company uses yeah. these. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes I don't think of Darren as such an engineer, but he really is, too. So he mm-hmm. must love this. He's a different kind of engineer. Yeah, he is. <laughs> He's a sweetheart, though. He yeah, got yes. that. Uh, yeah. It's surprising how ubiquitous those 3D printers have become. I mean, my son's in college, or was he just graduated this spring, but in the house that he and a couple other guy, boys uh, rented. They had four 3D printers. No wow. Way. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Like one for each of them plus one, in case one was down. Well, I have a whole little team back there now with Colin Kaminsky and... and uh, oh, that's other, right. He, Colin's with you guys. Yeah, yeah, and other guys. And so I'll mention a funny idea, what I think is a funny idea. Like, it's just kicking around ideas. And they'll come to my office like two Tim, hours later and be fuck? like, like this? Yeah. I'm like... <laughs> Damn, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When they first come at, you know, came out and they were still $10,000 to have a tiny one, a listener of ours had one and sent me a, a, my first 3D printed hop grenade. Oh, nice. It was really oh, cool. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, we have this thing and we don't even know what to do with it yet. So I made you a hop grenade, <laughs> uh, which was really cool. <laughs> Took 42 hours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, boys. Well, that's about all the time we have today. Uh, I want to thank you for being on the show. Yeah, guys. Appreciate it. You can go to morebeer.com and check out the various all-in-one systems that are available there. Or is it anvilbrewing.com? That is correct. You can go there as well. Uh, Not just the Foundry, which is brand new, so go check that out in the two different sizes. But there's a whole line of of Anvil equipment that you worked with John Palmer here to create uh, that is both affordable, efficient, sturdy, I mean, durable. Yeah, yep. it's durable stuff. So go to uh, 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 a trusted name behind it. That's right. That's one of the coolest parts. <laughs> Blickman and Palmer. Yeah. Come on. That's a, there's a, that's pretty <laughs> trusted. Yeah. <laughs> Anvilbrewing.com. Go check that out. Palmer, uh, our next episode, we're going to do one more here. Yeah. From home yeah. Mm-hmm. Before that too. We're going to sit down with Mufasa. Oh, yeah. We haven't got to talk with him in a, in a couple years, so that'll be a good time. So thanks for sticking with us. Uh, join us at HomebrewCon next year uh, in Nashville, Tennessee, where, which will be a good time. Go to uh, anvilbrewing.com. Go to morebeer.com. Check out all the things we were talking about today. And we'll see you next time on Brew Strong. Brew Strong, everyone. Brew Strong.